Here we're going to look at a problem from the Romanian Mathematical Olympiad. So this was suggested by a viewer, and actually I couldn't find this problem as part of the Romanian Mathematical Olympiad, but I only looked kind of hard. If you guys find it uh, somewhere on the internet and can tell me the year and the problem number, I'll add that to the description of this video. Great. So let's go ahead and look at the statement. So we want to define the sequence a n, where n goes from 0 to infinity, by a 0 equals p, which is any prime number, and a n plus 1 equals 2 a n minus 1 for n bigger than or equal to 0. So what that means is that a 1 is equal to 2 a 0 minus 1, so that's 2 p minus 1. A2 is equal to 2, A1 minus 1, and so on and so forth. And the goal is to prove that there is an M, which is a natural number, such that AM is not prime. In other words, this sequence is not made of all prime numbers. So obviously this should be true, because if this weren't true, then we'd have some nice generating formula for prime numbers, but it's well known that there's no generating formula for prime numbers. Okay, good. And then maybe before we talk about the hints, I want to give a shout out to one of my research collaborators who's actually originally from Romania, Karina Kalinescu, and she works at the City University of New York. So she's not on YouTube or anything, but I thought I'd just mention that there's some Romanian connection. Okay. Cool. So let's look at the hints for this problem. So the first thing that you want to do, or the first thing that we'll do, is find a closed form for a n, which is obviously going to depend on p. So there's probably tons of ways to find this closed form, but I'm a simpleton and I always tend towards the same thing, which is using generating functions. So that's how we're going to find our closed form. The next, we're going to, via experimentation, determine the value of m, which makes this thing not a prime. And so I'm not going to do a ton of that experimentation, but just that is how you will determine that m value. And then the fi finally, the last thing that you want to do is finish this thing off with Fermat's little theorem. So maybe if you want to, you can pause the video right now, give the problem a go with these hints, and then we'll look at a solution. All right, now we're going to look at a solution. And like I said, we're going to use generating functions in order to find a closed form. So that means I want to set ax equal to the following series. So it'll be the sum n equals 0 to infinity of a n x to the n. So anytime you have a sequence, you can form something called the generating function for that sequence. And it's made up of a power series whose coefficients are terms from the sequence. So that's exactly exactly what I've done here. Now the next thing that I want to do is pull this apart into two different pieces and then apply the recursion. But notice the recursion only takes over after we have a subscript of 1 here because notice n equals 0 would give us a 1 there. So that means I'm going to split out the first term. So that'll be a0 plus now we have the sum n equals 1 to infinity of a n x to the n but we know that a0 is equal to this prime number. And now I'm going to go ahead and re-index this thing. So I'll go ahead and send n to n plus 1. So that's going to change my starting point from 1 to 0. And that's going to give me the sum n equals 0 to infinity of a sub n plus 1 x to the n plus 1. Okay, now for good measure, I want to factor an x out of this. I think that'll be helpful later. So now we have p plus x times the sum n equals 0 to infinity of a n plus 1 x to the n. Fantastic. And now we're set up to apply our recursion. So we'll replace a n plus 1 with 2 a n minus 1. And that's going to give us p plus, now we have the sum n equals 0 to infinity. We have this x out front, 2 a sub n minus 1 times x to the n. Great. So what I've done is I've just replaced this a sub n plus 1 with uh, a n times 2 minus 1, which is how this function is recursively defined. This sequence is re recursively defined, I should say. Great. Now the next thing that I'm going to do is split this up into two pieces. So let's see. I'll have this as p plus 
uh, 2 times x, so I'll take a 2 out of this, and now we have the sum n equals 0 to infinity of a n x to the n. Great. That's actually really, really nice because notice that is our original generating function, and that's the whole goal here is to somehow recreate our original generating function. Fantastic. Now the next thing that we can do is see that we can make this minus sign come out and that will give us minus x times the sum n equals 0 to infinity of x to the n. Great. So notice our 2 a sub n term became this after factoring the 2 out, keeping in mind that we have an x in front of this whole thing, and then our minus 1 term became this, again keeping in mind that we have an x in front of the whole thing. Okay, great. Now the next thing to notice is that this guy right here is our original generating function, a of x, and then this guy right here is a geometric series. So that sums to 1 over 1 minus x. So you should keep those kind of things in mind every time you're working with generating functions because the geometric series expansion is your best friend in this case. So that is going to give us 2 times x times a of x. So that's what we get from this term. And I forgot my addition of the prime in front. So we have p plus 2 times x times a of x. And now we have minus x over 1 minus x. And that's because this thing sums to 1 over 1 minus x. Okay, so now let's go ahead and bring this a of x down. And notice that we have just created this functional equation involving our generating function. So let's go ahead and solve for a of x. So notice we can say a of x minus 2x a of x equals p minus x over 1 minus x. Great. Now we can factor an a of x out of this left hand side. That's probably something that we want to do. Then we'll be left with 1 minus 2x times a of x. So that's our left hand side equals p minus 1 over 1 minus x. That's our right hand side. Great. Now the next thing that we want to do is divide by a 1 minus 2x. That's going to give us a of x equals, we have p over 1 minus 2x, and then we're going to have minus, I missed my x here, minus x over 1, 1 minus 2x times 1 minus x. Great. So this is the closed form for our generating function. So I'm going to go ahead and bring that to the top and then we will re-expand this using geometric series. All right, on the last board we defined our generating function a of x equals this power series whose coefficients are made up of our goal sequence. Then we determined a closed form for this, a of x equals p over 1 minus 2x minus x over 1 minus 2x times 1 minus x. Now the next thing that we want to do is expand that more and that is going to require using partial fraction decomposition on this term. So let's go ahead and do that. We'll take x over 1 minus 2x times 1 minus x, and we're going to go ahead and write that as um, b over 1 minus 2x plus c over 1 minus x. So our standard method of doing partial fraction decomposition. Now what we'll do from here is clear the denominators. In other words, we'll multiply the whole thing by 1 minus 2x times 1 minus x. Notice that is going to give us x on the left hand side. And then on the right hand side we will have b times 1 minus x because notice the 1 minus 2x terms cancel. And then plus c times 1 minus 2x again because the 1 minus x terms cancel in this case. Great. Now this gives us really a system of two equations and two unknowns. We have one equation which is everything attached to x's on both sides, and then another one which is the constants on both sides. Okay, so let's look at everything attached to x's. So notice on the right hand side we're going to have a minus b and then a minus 2c. So that's going to be minus b minus 2c, so that's equal to 1 because the coefficient of x on the left hand side is 1. Now attached to the numbers, so on the right hand side we have b plus c, 
And then on the left hand side, we have zero. So we know that B plus Z equals zero. But that very, very quickly gives us that C equals negative B. And then we can go ahead and take this value of C equals negative B and put it into our first equation. And that is going to give us B um, plus 2B. Because notice we've got minus 2 minus b, so obviously that's going to be plus b um, equals 1. But notice that simplifies, and we get b equals 1, which tells us that c equals negative 1. Okay, great. So that gives us our decomposition. So in other words, we can rewrite this term, which is x over 1 minus 2x times 1 minus x as 1 over 1 minus 2x minus 1 over 1 minus x. Okay, um, so I'll go ahead and do that and I'll put this inside of this generating function and that'll allow us to easily move on to the next step. Okay, we just got done doing a partial fraction decomposition on this thing over here that I have circled. Now I've inserted the results of that partial fraction decomposition into this generating function. Just keep in mind that there's a minus sign here which we did not have in the partial fraction decomposition. And then I've combined some terms. So all of that is like a very easy analysis. And we've got a of x equals p minus one. So that's our prime minus one, that's just a number, over one minus two x plus 1 over 1 minus x. Now the next thing that we'll do is re-expand each of these as geometric series. So let's just recall real quick, we've already used this a few times, but let's just recall for good measure that if we have 1 over 1 minus u, that is the sum n equals 0 to infinity of u to the n. So we're doing that twice. In the first case, our u is equal to 2x, and in the second case, our u is just equal to x. So that is going to give us p minus 1 times the sum n equals 0 to infinity of 2 to the n x to the n. Obviously, we have 2x to the n power, but that's easily simplified. And now this is going to be plus the sum n equals 0 to infinity of x to the n. Great. Now we can mash that all together into one sum, and that is going to give us the sum n equals 0 to infinity of, now this is going to be pretty big, we'll have 2 to the n times p minus 1, so that's what we get from the first bit, and then we'll have plus 1. Good, and now we have x to the n. Okay, so, but let's recall that our a of x was originally defined as the power series whose coefficients are our terms from our sequence. So what that tells us is that the nth term from our sequence is equal to this guy right here. In other words, we have achieved a closed form for our sequence. a of n equals 2 to the n times p minus 1 plus 1. So perfect, we have a closed form for our sequence. Now, um, I'll bring that closed form up and we'll get to showing that it is sometimes a composite number. In other words, it's not a prime. Okay, we just got done calculating a closed form for this sequence. We have a sub n equals two to the n times the quantity p minus one plus one. And earlier I said maybe to do some experimentation to find a place where this thing is a composite number, but actually it's easy to see where this is going to happen just by looking at the statement of Fermat's little theorem. And that says that if we have a prime p that does not divide a, then a to the p minus 1 is congruent to 1 mod p. So what we want to do is notice that here we have 2 to the n. Here we have an exponent of p minus 1. So it might be nice to look at uh, n equals p minus 1 and see what happens. And I just want to point out that as we do this, we need to uh, notice that this only works... for primes p not equal to 2 because notice that if our prime is equal to 2 then obviously the prime is going to divide our base here. But you can work out that case when the prime is p equals to 2 easily by hand. Maybe play around with it yourself and find the first one which is composite and put it in the comments.
Okay, great. So now let's go ahead and look at a sub p minus 1 and reduce that thing mod p. So notice that is equal to 2 to the p minus 1 and then times p minus 1 plus 1. But then by Fermat's little theorem, we know that 2 to the p minus 1 is congruent to 1 mod p. So that gives us p minus 1 plus 1 mod p, but that is congruent to p mod p, but that is congruent to 0 mod p. But then let's recall that if a sub p minus 1 is congruent to 0 mod p, that is the same thing as saying that p divides a sub p minus 1. But then since a sub p minus 1 is not equal to the original prime. So that's like pretty easy to see that a sub p minus 1 is not equal to the original prime. Um, we have a sub p minus 1 is not prime which was exactly what we wanted to do. We wanted to find some m where a m is not prime and that we that's what we've done our m just happens to be p minus 1 all right that's a good place to stop